prepare for it like for an interview. That is a card that doesn't have a number, so basically you cannot pay with it online. Another 1,000 euros. And these two are connected. Hi friends, this is Axi, your favorite YouTube architect. Welcome if you're here for a second time and if you're here for the first time, consider subscribing as that will encourage me to make more videos about travel, moving to countries and a lot of other stuff. So today's video will be all about moving to Berlin. I know I moved to Berlin a long time ago, three and a half years ago. I still answer a lot of questions about my time there, about setting things up, about what you should do for the first time to win either time or money or to save money. Now I can look back and see what, what worked, what didn't work or what I wish I would have done differently. So I'm gonna start with a very important thing and that is the fact that all good moves start with a bit of prep even if it's just a tiny bit. It's important to, or it's easier for you to set things up a bit. So I didn't want to move to Berlin and look for a job there because I imagine that would cost a lot of money just to be there without a job. So before I moved there, I did a lot of research. I prepared my CV and my portfolio. I applied to hundreds, yes, hundreds of architecture offices. Even if they didn't have an open position, I'd still send my CV and my portfolio. I had a list of all the architecture offices in Berlin. So if you need that, I'm happy to share it. <laughs> and then I just went to Berlin when I got the first answers and the first interviews. I even booked my flight just after I had the first three interviews. I had six interviews in total and I was offered four jobs in the end and then I chose one of them. So this kind of set me up and I didn't have to wait for a long time just to have an income. Also, I found it very important to do some prep work for where you're going to live. So I was lucky enough to actually be able to crash with someone and I advise you to do the same. If you can ask someone, if you can stay with them for a week or two weeks, if like even the tiniest bit of time is important because that means that you're not going to spend money on rent for that time. Even though if they're just acquaintances, it's always worth to ask if they can host you for a while. And the third thing to prep is where you're going to have your own rent for a longer time. And you can already look before you go to Berlin on some sites. I recommend Wege Gesucht, which I'll link below, where you can find some lets or rooms in apartments with other people. This is all prep work and it just takes time. It's not something difficult or, or something not manageable. And then I will go to the part of what happens when you're actually there. The second most important thing that you'll have to solve when you're in Berlin is where you're going to live on your own. This was a shock for me as this works very differently in Germany than in Romania. In Romania, when you're looking for rent, you kind of choose a place. So if you like a place and you choose it, you shake on the deal with the landlord and that's it. In Germany, this is very different. This real estate market is also like an interview. Some people will ask you to come to a viewing, which is not a viewing and you should prepare for it like for an interview, especially if you're gonna live there in an apartment with other people. They mostly want to know what your hobbies are, what do you do, what did you ever live with other people? You kind of want to make sure that you can live with other people and you're not a sloppy person and you're kind of, you know, you know the deal of how a shared apartment works. Treat it like an interview and put your best foot forward. I didn't get any of the interviews that I had with other people, <laughs> unfortunately. I think it was very scary for them that I never lived on my own and only lived with my parents before. I eventually got a sublet from someone this is very curious. I got a sublet from someone who was going with Erasmus for uh, five months and they chose me because I was the least weird person of all the persons that came to the interview. So, yes. I actually looked for around three weeks for a place to sublet and I was going for a viewing at least once every day, sometimes even more. If you're looking for a long-term rental, like let's say a year or something like that, you're not going to be able to get that in the first three months in Germany. So in order to get a long-term rental, you need to have three months of payslips from a German company. You also need to have a credit score, which you get automatically once you register in Germany 
But coming as an outsider, you don't even have the documentation necessary, the basic documentation necessary to go to that interview. So don't need to look on Immobilien Billion Scout or other platforms for renting, just look on Vegegesucht. And also word of mouth is very useful. I personally never found anything like that, but I know many, many people who, who found rooms or found apartments just by saying, oh yeah, I need something really quick. It's always worse to just say it and maybe you, know, you find something. So again, with the apartments, my recommendation is to message as many as possible, message all the apartments that at least look okay and then see who writes you back and who calls you for an interview and then you select from that one. Or if you're lucky, like this is again a matter of luck, it's just like who selects you. So why do you need to have a place and why do you need to register? And these two are connected. You need to register because in order to get your first paycheck as an employee in Germany, you need to have a tax number. This is called Steuernummer. You will get this when you register for the fir very first time at the city hall and this will never change for the rest of your life. So if you have it, you're set, all good to go. If you don't have it, you have to look for places which will let you do the Anmeldung, so the, the registration at the city hall. You will come to know this as the very famous and painful thing to do because many, many places don't allow this, even though I don't understand why. The unmailing is just you going at the city hall with three papers. One of them is just like a plain paper in which the landlord says, yeah, this person lives here and I let them do the unmailing and it's signed by them. The landlord doesn't have to come with you to the city hall. It's just a formality. It's something very easy to do once you have that, but I don't know why they have this idea that they don't let many people do on melding in the, in the apartments. So fingers crossed that you find something because without this tax ID, I think you can get your salary, but unfortunately without tax ID, you will be taxed in the highest tax bracket that there is in Germany. So you, you probably get a few hundred euros less than what you're supposed to get. The appointments for registering are so few and you cannot get appointments for like months to end. You have to go on the site and then you have to click that you want any appointment in Berlin and then it will give you like the earliest one, which will probably in a city hall at the edge of the city, it's still okay. With the rent done and the Anmeldung done, the next important thing that I want to talk to, as always, is health insurance. <laughs> So first of all, you shouldn't travel anywhere without health insurance. You should always make sure that you are all the time covered, but by at least one kind of insurance. The mandatory health insurance, you can only have in one country. So basically you cannot have the mandatory health insurance both in the country of origin and in Germany. You will have the one in your country of origin until you stop paying your contribution. And then if you come from an EU country, you, ha you still have emergency, health insurance if you need to go to the emergency room for another three months. So that's a basic coverage if you come from the EU. You can also, there's a lot of cars which offer travel, travel insurance for 45 days or 90 days. So that's also a very good option is just to travel there and to have it for the first month or so. And then as soon as you have a job, you don't have, actu you don't have to worry about this very much and you don't have to provide any documentation or do any paperwork because the health insurance is paid by, by your employer, by the deductions that are taken from your salary automatically. So the only thing you have to do is actually choose one because there are many health providers in Germany. And I recommend going on a site like Check24. That's the one I use for comparing um, what each health insurance includes. I think I chose the, one of the cheapest ones because I don't go to the doctor that often. So I didn't want to pay much money on this but I used HKK, but then also TK is very recommended by many of my friends. So see what is the most suitable and affordable and where's the balance between expensive and with a lot of options. Then I'll move on to some things which are not urgent and not super important, but it's just good to know them. The, the first one of them is the phone number. So if you're thinking whether you should have a German phone number or not, I definitely recommend it. You can make do without a German number, that's also fine. But I think in many cases, 
you really need it. You need it for a lot of bookings, you need, you need it also for doctor's appointments, and it also looks way better if you write your German number when you're interviewing for apartments, they have a means of contacting you on a German number. I think that just looks way, way better, more professional, and it looks more like you're already part of that scene. You will make a way better impression than having a foreign number. With that being said, what I recommend is these cards from Aldi or Lidl, like Aldi Talk or Lidl Talk. I know it's like it sounds weird that these supermarkets have prepaid phones, but almost all the people that I know use them. I use Aldi Talk and it's very easy, straightforward. You sign up online and then they send you the SIM card via post. So my next point is the bank. The long story short, you don't really need a bank at the beginning, especially if you have an European IBAN or a WISE account. Salary can be transferred to any account with, which has an IBAN. So I don't think this is something to focus on in the beginning, especially because you also need a tax ID for this. And you also need some kind of semi-permanent address because they're gonna send the cards to you via post again. I think it's the best to just wait for this until you have time and have a peace of mind to look to, for the best option. When you're looking for the best option, also keep in mind that in Germany there are two cards that are being used. One of them is Visa or MasterCard, depending on what the bank offers. And the second one is a Maestro, also called an Etze Karte. And it's good to have both of them because in different places you can pay with different cards. And also if you just have the Etsy Carte, that is a card that doesn't have a number. So basically you cannot pay with it online. So my recommendation would be to look for a bank which offers you the both and which can give you both. I looked to many banks and I looked for the lowest like opening fees and maintenance fees. And I chose at that point ING because it has no maintenance fees, no card fees and you can also have ATM withdrawals without any cost as well and the thing with ING was that it offered a current and also a savings bank account and both of them for free so basically the whole bank was free I don't know if that's still the case now I know they change a lot of terms so it's good looking into it I also chose ING because it was all online so I didn't have to go to any banks I also find that very comfortable I just talked to someone from the post on the phone to confirm my identity and that was it the account was settled another one that a lot of my friends use is N26 which I didn't have at the time in Germany but I have now in Spain and I can also recommend it it's also very straightforward to open an account all online all the verification are done online the only thing with N26 is that I don't know if they offer a savings account for free so yeah definitely consider many options but this is not something super urgent to do as soon as you get in Berlin cool so let's move to my next point which is transportation in Berlin you're either gonna be a public transport kind of person or a bicycle kind of person. I started with one and I turned out to be the second. So basically when I got there I didn't want to spend the money on the monthly ticket for the public transport because I said oh I, I won't go that much with the public transport and then I ended up spending money for the individual tickets and then at the end of the month I calculated how much money I spent on the individual tickets and it turned out to be the exact same amount as the monthly ticket so it was just like ridiculous because I spent the same amount of money and I walked a lot on foot so I, I don't recommend doing that at all you can get the monthly ticket which is around 86 euros the last time that I checked and that will allow you to go everywhere around the city with the u-bahn with the with all the trains uh, with all the trams with all the buses so it's super nice my best recommendation now looking back would be to get a bike as soon as you are there because you're gonna go to a lot of viewings you're gonna go to interviews you're gonna go all around the city everywhere and the bike is going to be fast and cheap. But I know not, this is not for all people, and especially if you come from a city in which bicycles are not used that much. I came also from a city in Romania, which has a lot of hills. It doesn't have any bike paths, so I considered biking around the city to be dangerous, and I said maybe not as soon as I get to Berlin. But again, I, re I really recommend the bike, and I'm really excited about bikes, and Berlin is super safe and super clean with bikes and straightforward and with bike lanes everywhere and with stops for bikes everywhere, and it's very clear where you have to go, so you don't have to be like in these uncertain situations where you don't know if a car is going to hit you, you know? The cars are always waiting for the, for the bikes. I've never had any serious unpleasant experience in Berlin with a bike. As I said, I didn't bike that much before, I didn't actually learn to bike until very late in life. My 
recommendations for getting bikes. If you want to get a new bike, there's a lot of shops for new bikes that you can research that online. But there's also eBay Conant Saturn when a lot of people sell their old bikes. And if you have a bit of an experience with bikes and you know what bikes are good, I recommend to go there and to check it out. I bought my second bike there because I already knew what kind of bike I liked. I bought the second one there and that is the one that I took with me to Belgium. It's a very good bike and I bought it for around 70 euros. And then another option, which is also super good and super cheap, and you can have it straight from the beginning. There's this service now called Swap Feeds, in which you pay 20 euros per month to kind of like rent a bike, which is super cheap, like 20 euros per month for a bike. When I found about this and I thought if the service would have been around when I first came to Berlin, I think I would have never bought a bike. So convenient and I know a lot of people who do this as well. So there's so many options with transport. You have to choose the best for you, but choose one. Don't like, don't buy individual tickets like I did because it's definitely not worth it. The last thing that I want to talk about is how to approach the German language and if you actually need it. So brace yourself. I speak German and still I felt like I was treated differently because it was very obvious from my accent that I'm a foreigner, especially in this like very formal context like the city hall. But this is just a very small part. So for my job, all the plans and everything are of course in German but in my office I was the only one speaking German of all the foreigners and I had colleagues from Australia, from Finland, from Canada, from Ukraine and they all spoke English and I spoke English with them and there wasn't any problem whatsoever with this. I, I didn't see with them that they had a problem working in German. I, I think they did a very good job. Basically, I just spoke German with my boss and I don't think this is a problem whatsoever in a professional context because everyone speaks English nowadays. I, if this is in architecture, which is also kind of like, you know, like a traditional job, I think that in IT or in any of the new scenes, there shouldn't be any problem with getting a job in English. I, I think this is not an issue at all. However, just to keep in mind, if you go at the doctor or if you go at the city hall as well, like for the registration, they will speak only German to you. They won't speak English because they think this is a liability. So be prepared and go with someone that speaks German. Just ask a friend or an acquaintance of someone or be prepared to use Google Translate. But again, not a problem and not so, like definitely not a barrier from moving to Berlin. Okay, so that's almost at the end of the video, but I want to say some things about the budget that I had for this move. Like I spent around three weeks in Germany looking for apartments basically. So, and I got my first paycheck at the end of another four weeks. So I spent like seven weeks on this budget, so to say. I spent around 1000 euros for food, my transportation whatsoever that I did, you know, all the tickets that I bought, all these small expenses that I had. And then I spent another 1000 euros for the rent for the first month of the apartment, also for the deposit of the apartment. But this is very cheap. So I think now it will be more like 2000 just to be safe for that. Apart from this, I didn't spend anything else because as I said, I didn't want to like spend money on transportation. I rather walk and I kind of want to keep my, my expenses very low until I got my first paycheck. And when I got my first paycheck, I, I bought the bike, which was 200 euros. And I also was super lucky to have someone to to be with for the three weeks that I was looking for an apartment so I didn't have to spend money on rent again I would calculate at least 1,500 euros for this like ideally 2,000 euros for this just to be safe and to have a buffer I hope this was informative and you found some good tips if you have any other questions let me know in the comments and I will make sure to answer them. So I plan to do another video about finding a rent in Berlin and also maybe a more detailed video about how I applied for my job. Let me know if you have any other questions or you know ideas about videos that I can make regarding Berlin life. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you soon.